What's going on everybody, it's Conti here with another video. In today's tutorial we are going to have a look at how a user can create and define their own functions using the JavaScript programming language. On the screen here you can see the source code for a HTML document which will make up a web page where the HTML tags enclose the head and the body of my web page documents. The JavaScript is in the middle from lines 5 to 12. A function is basically a set of instructions which is run when the function itself is called. In this particular example here, my function name is say something. Alongside the function name, I've written rounded brackets, open and closed, which can be used to pass values onto the function, which I'll get onto in the next example. In JavaScript, a pointed bracket one open and one closed are used to hold the instructions. A function definition alone won't actually run the set of instructions that you have given it. At the bottom of my JavaScript code on line 11, I've written the function name with the brackets also and the ending marked with a semicolon. This is going to act as the function call so that when I open up the web page and the browser recognizes this particular function name, the set of instructions from the function say something should be executed. In this case here, the web browser should display the word hi, like so. In this second example, I've created a function which adds up three individual numbers. At the start of my JavaScript code, I have declared three variables, each with a unique identifier, an individual integer value assigned to them. In order for my add up function to be able to use these three variables here, you establish inside the rounded brackets how many different variables are going to be added. And so here I have typed in three individual letters, each separated by the commas. Whatever values are passed in these three slots will then be added together and written on the web browser screen. Notice how that these values don't match up the actual variable names. They're just telling your program how many different values are going to be passed on. These are referred to as parameters, which can be used, obviously, by the function. On line 14, where I've written the function name and the set of brackets inside these, I've written the actual variable names so that the program knows which variables it needs to use when it executes its sets of instructions. The italic format of some of the writing here is due to the notepad++ window that I'm using. This particular page I've saved on my desktop as functions1.html. When I load my page in Microsoft Edge, which is my chosen web browser for this tutorial, you can see the total appearing, which is the result of the three values passed on as parameters in my original source code. 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals 6. In my third and final example, I will show you here how functions can be called by other actions that the end user can do. In this particular web page, I've created two buttons, one which says summer and the other one which displays autumn. When either button is clicked, it will run a function which will display a particular image on the page. I've included the hyperlinks for each of these images in JavaScript comments below here in green on lines 15 and 16. I have saved copies of each image as .jpeg files on my desktop so I don't have to write any directories here alongside the file name for the web page to find. The images will be stored in the HTML element that I have named with the ID image. At present, this particular component is empty. As shown here, when I load up the same page in Microsoft Edge, I've got two buttons up here, Summer and Autumn. When I left click on the Summer button, the Summer picture appears. And likewise, when I click on the Autumn button. The end user can then click back on summer or autumn again. Should a button for an image that is already displayed be clicked on again, the page will stay the same. 
and that is made possible here in my function definition where the function name again with the parenthesis here is written above using speech marks next to on click which tells the web page how this will run notice how this time I don't pass any parameters to this particular user defined function all I need it to do is to change what's in the image HTML components on my page here each time lines 5 6 and 7 are written outside the script tags as these are lines of code in HTML the HTML is referred to using these instructions here document dot get element by ID followed by the image ID so that the file name is placed in between the set of speech marks both function names are unique also thank you very much for watching I hope that tutorial was useful to you to support this channel please like and subscribe join me soon for another video take care